The MP412C is, quite simply, a supercar you could live with every single day of the year if you wanted to. It's a car with heated seats and dual climate control and, to be honest with you, the ride comfort of a Rolls Royce. In fact, that last bit's a lie because the last roller I rode in didn't ride as well as this supercar. But it's also a car with an automatic gearbox and such good forward visibility you sometimes wonder if you could see your own feet. But should people drive supercars every day? I mean, don't they lose something when they become comfortable and sanitised? In being so technically capable, is the MP412C actually less effective as something to sort of rattle your undergarments when you go for an occasional drive on a Sunday? Because that's what you do in a supercar. Come to think of it, does the world actually need good supercars, aren't they kind of defined by being a bit rubbish, noisy, hard to see out of, difficult to drive? Is the MP412C kind of not a supercar because it is so good at going slowly? Which it is. Do you know what? Judged by those criteria, the MP412C is in no way a real supercar because its dihedral doors open wide for easy access. The boot is a decent size for shopping and the view behind in these massive mirrors is truly widescreen. It's a wide car, but it's not an intimidating car to drive. Actually, I want to make one proviso there. It's not intimidating to drive, but in one respect, this car does feel like a genuine supercar, even at low speed, and it's the pedal box. Sounds strange, but the pedals are quite heavily sprung. They take quite a push, and judging your inputs takes time. I'm not saying it's impossible, but certainly around town, you have to get used to how much throttle you need to make the car creep off the line. And you need to just remember how much brake pressure is required because sometimes it doesn't always correlate with what you think you need. It's not difficult, but it keeps you thinking. It's not a Nissan Micra that happens to do 200 miles an hour. The other thing that takes a bit of getting used to is the creep in first gear from stationary. I'm in first now, if I let go, the car does get going at quite a rate. In fact, I would say it, it kind of creeps like a teenage boy outside a girl's dormitory when he's about 14 years old. It's that kind of creep, you know? Unreassuring. But, as I said, you get used to it. In the most part, for a car that can literally scare the bejesus out of grown men, this car is offensively easy to drive at low speed. MP412C to mooch around town, although you could argue that in terms of disciplines that was the most difficult thing it had to conquer. Making fast cars go slowly is not easy. But I'm now out on some more open roads. Truly, the MP412C is not like any other car I've ever driven. It is strange, fascinating, complex, brilliant, frustrating, all of those adjectives, but most of all, it's unforgettable. The reasons for these freakish qualities, well, first of all, there's proactive chassis control. As you probably know, the McLaren doesn't have conventional springs and dampers. It does have support at each corner, but it's hydraulically suspended. So effectively, there's hydraulic fluid linking every corner, so the car is suspended 
diagonally and sort of vertically. And it means that every single time one of the ECU spots that a corner of the car needs support, it can throw extra support, effectively extra spring rate, at that corner. It does mean that on the road it gives you this incredible flat ride. When I mentioned it riding better than a Rolls Royce, I really do mean that at this sort of speed, 58 miles an hour on an A road, where a 458 or a 911 GT3 would be jiggling around, this really isn't. It's just level and flat and it makes the car incredibly soothing and comfortable. We'll come back to that in a minute because do we want our supercars to be comfortable and soothing? Personally, I do because it means that you can enjoy this car more of the time and most of all you can enjoy it on long journeys. Now the chassis is kind of infinitely variable but you can choose three settings so you can either have it in normal, sport or track mode. On the road, normal gives you lovely suppleness, move it into sport and you just get a little bit more support and then move it one more time into track and you get a very firm riding car which I have to say isn't necessarily for me. The powertrain is the same, it has three settings, normal, sport and track. They bring about some big differences. So at the moment I've got an automatic car, I put my foot down, it kicks down for me, it gives me a bit of noise. But if I go into sport mode, I then get paddle shift and I also get a lot more noise. This is what's interesting about this car. That's when it changes. It's a pretty remarkable powertrain this. 3.8 litre twin turbo V8 little under 600 horsepower, 442 foot-pounds of torque, and it's insanely fast. Zero to 100 miles an hour in a little over six seconds, 205 flat out, and so much torque, okay? This is fourth gear. It just pulls. It has seven gears. It needs about three gears. Remember how there was a geek at everyone's school who one day, completely without warning, left his computer screen, bought a bottle of vodka and cut loose in the most spectacular fashion imaginable? Well, the MP412C is just that character, computer optimised to behave like a family hatchback when it needs to be house trained and then BANG! A frothing monster the moment you twiddle a few switches and push that long travel throttle into the carpet. MP412C like at my home circuit, Castle Coombe, fast. That's the first word that springs to mind. It's the one that sticks with you a bit as well as you drive it. It's just incredibly fast. I've got the car in track mode now. Less assistance, revving out, 7, 8. I mean, that's just immensely fast. In fact, it bears no resemblance to the thing that was quite happily pootling around the centre of Bristol yesterday. Listen to that noise! motor doesn't really feel turbocharged when you're up it, you just pull another gear, gear change, instant, bang, snap, and away it goes. It is an animal, it's just so quick. I've got lots more support in track mode, so the ride is firm, but the car is agile, wants to change direction. But there is one big change about this car over the last time I drove it. Before, you couldn't really turn the systems off. Now you can turn the systems off, and it will do this. But forget skidding around for a minute. It's only when you're barreling into a turn like tower, third gear, a bit too quick, and you feel the systems moving around, the support changing on the suspension, the traction control working. So much going on that you think to yourself, hang on a minute, this car can actually warm my ass. It can play beautiful music through its meridian hi-fi. It can cruise through town. It's only when you're doing this and you try and remember just what it can do, its breadth of ability that you realize just how special this car really is. 